Hi there guys, it's Martha Mew here and today we have a new series for you. So this is the first episode of Pokemon Day Matches where we will be doing a different um, matchup each week. Um, so we're starting off this week with a Darkrai EXGX deck versus an Alolan Ninetales deck. Um, and I am sporting the Alolan Ninetales deck, it is my own deck um, and Darkrai deck is Matt's own deck. So uh, we are using our own decks to start with. Um, at some point, we will probably be using each other's decks, which will go into the realm of weirdness. But um, to start with, this is how we're going. Um, so just um, drawing our opening hands. Um, Matt there, I think, not going to get a basic, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can see me starting there with uh, something else and then a Glaceon onto the bench. Me knowing full well that Glaceon isn't going to be very much help against his deck because his deck is all basics, because that's just the way Dark Ray Ace and GX works. Um, and Glaceon's attack, obviously, stopping evolution Pokemon. Um, so I believe I rolled to go first as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, guys, hopefully these matches will be. Um, okay for you we're try we're trying to start with just doing one game per um, per video we did actually try and record multiple games for this to get a best of three but the recording uh, messed up during the second game so unfortunately we don't get to see uh, a longer video for you but hopefully I feel like this video is actually long enough to stand alone and it's actually a, a reasonably good match anyway so let's see so, starting the game, I managed to draw before flipping the Pokemon up, but who cares? <laughs> as long as it's all done, it's fine. Um, attaching the energy to Lapras to start that collect up when it comes to my next turn. Um, it's the only option I've really got at the minute as well, because Glaceon can't do much. <coughs> and obviously the Hooper on Matt's bench there is basically a stopping point. For both of the Pokemon that are on mine at the minute, so unless I get a Ninetales in action at some point, uh, that Hooper is going to be a problem. Uh, playing a Great Ball to look at the top seven cards and find a Pokemon. Hits a Dark Row on the last card, wow. Obviously goes to hand for the Great Ball, which is brilliant because you don't want to be putting that Dark Ray on the bench. It really wants to go to the discard pile because its ability puts it back onto the bench with an energy. So Skylaring. I think it was for a Professor's Letter at this point, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, finding no Professor's Letter in his deck. Whether that's because we don't actually have one in the deck or it's in the prizes. Uh, sadly. So Matt has to choose something else to get with Skylar. I have to say it's a pretty difficult decision at this point because there's not much on the field to really do anything with. Um, so let's see what he chooses. Playing up the Max Elixir at the front of the deck there. I don't actually what you I don't actually remember what you go for in the end. Where is it? There isn't there isn't actually one in there. There isn't a, a professor letter in there. There isn't one in there. The decisions it's, are difficult. It's very situational where you would need a professor's letter in the hand. Yeah, so he goes for the Max Elixir instead, which obviously will get an energy for him, hopefully if he top decks it with six cards. Um, I 
think we're about to see the elixir go off, possibly. No, he doesn't want to put the energy onto the hoover, so leaving that. My handful of um, aqua patches and shit and stuff, and no Vulpixes to put down, so I can't evolve the uh, evolve it into the nine tails I have in my hand. <laughs> Hands full of good cards, but nothing I can really use at any one point. Choose to attach another energy to Lapras to, to fuel up the blizzard burn that's coming up. I can't actually remember what it's called. I think it's blizzard burn, blizzard edge, something. For later turn, just use collect to end my turn. Draw another three cards. Which I think made my hand a little bit better. Mac Kukuiing. So he top decked another of the uh, dark quarry, so he's got both in there at the minute. But no energy, as we can see. Oh, he did have an energy. I'm just getting, yeah. <laughs> getting rid of the dark ray and energy, which is just going to come straight back. Um, ultra balling, getting the dark ray EX onto the bench. Just needing that energy to discard for the Ultra Ball so that he could use Dark Crow properly because he doesn't want to discard stuff that he can't get back unless it's absolutely necessary. And we see the Elixir go off. I think he gets in like the first or second card or something, I don't remember. But uh, it's going to go straight onto that Dark Crow, whatever happens. The uh, EX, of course, because that's the main attacker. The other one's just there to stick energy on. And because if it goes to the discard pile, it can come straight back with an energy. It's uh, effectively you can attach two energy per turn that way. Because it doesn't, it doesn't come to the attaching, it's just with it. And it comes back. No energy in hand, so I can't attach to your vettel and do any damage at all. Finally get a Volpix, can't immediately evolve it though, which is sad, but uh, Ultra Balling and choosing to throw away... I think it's energy after I manage to remember to, to uh, <laughs> use the Professor's Letter I know is in my hand first. Matt feeling jealous that I actually have a professor's letter to use. <laughs> Ultra Ball throwing away the two energy I just got. I have enough energy in my hand in the first place, but it's special energy rather than. Choose the second ball picks to get out. Ball picks being the obvious core of the deck, so... Did you throw the ball into a ball of bricks again? I did. I had the nine tails in hand, so I didn't need anything else. And I didn't have Brooklet Hill. Yeah, so Brooklet Hill would have been really nice a lot earlier in this game, but I didn't see it. <laughs> and then when I did, it was way too late, and I didn't need it. So that was great. I think I decided to do, use another professor's letter to get some energy, basic energy that is. Yeah, which is what I need for Lapras to uh, KO the Yvettel, inactive. That or I do some funky stuff with a Guzma. I'm almost wishing at this point that I didn't have the Glaceon on the bench just because it's again it's gonna get in the way and it's a two prize knockout if he chooses to take advantage of it. He's also got two retreat and there's no mana fee on the bench yet, so it would be stuck. Just 
just checking I haven't used the support in this turn before I believe I play Guzma. Bring in the thing that isn't going to come straight back if I KO it. <laughs> Aqua patch onto the Lapras because I've attached return onto the Vulpix. I could have done it the other way around, I could have um, Aqua patched the Vulpix and yeah, but it doesn't really matter. Does the same thing, achieves the same outcome either way. And I think choosing to do 160. Leaving Dark Right on 20. Of course, that means I can't attack in the next turn. But uh, it's still a lot of damage, and I know I have Nine Tails in my hand to evolve into Volpix, and I'm pretty sure I had a DCE in my hand as well. I think it's near the back of my hand, though, if you look. Um, and obviously, having to pay the retreat cost for Lapras is a bit eek, but. Um, I've run aqua patches so I wasn't too worried. Drawing an energy switch. So evolving one of the Vulpixes. Yeah, you can see the DC at the front of my hand there. Attaching that to the nine tails. <coughs> Pardon you. <laughs> Discarding two to retreat into nine tails, and I believe then taking the KO on the dark cry. Taking two prize cards and leaving Matt in a slightly difficult situation. Unfortunately for me, he has a rescue stretcher in hand. <laughs> so even that dark row came straight back, but granted not with the, not with the energy. However, the Avetal can fix that. <laughs> See the Skylar? For the elixir, which because um, obviously the event all can put on um, the energy that's in the discard pile onto the dark cry, um, he can attach any energy he does have in his hand for turn, and then next turn, if somehow he can switch the dark cry in, he's got some way of doing damage. So there we go, that's the elixir done with hit with the elixir both times he's used it so far. What we like to see. Looks fucking into a Guzma. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry guys that the turns are pretty long. Both me and Matt actually like to think about what we're doing and not play too quickly and make mistakes. Um, I know personally I get really annoyed if I do play too quickly and do it completely wrong and I, I would rather think out my turn slightly more. Pulling something forward to attach, I think, or play. I don't know what it is right now. Oh, an energy onto the Lapras. And we see another Aqua Patch also onto the Lapras. I feel like at this point in the game I need to uh, get some damage done. So I pull in the Lapras because of A Stroller, and I can immediately evolve the other Nine Tails 
uh, the, the other Vulpix into Ninetales because it's been down a few turns and just immediately replace the Vulpix. Ace will look a very good card, even in uh, an evolution type of deck. As long as you've got a stage 2. I was going to say, yeah, as long as you're not running a stage 2 evolution deck. It's not. Uh, it's not as much of a hinder. Yeah. So using Lapras' 160 damage move to KO the battle. Not playing Sophocles, discarding Darkrai and a Delinquent. I'm pretty sure he's got a energy in a discard pile to bring that Darkrai back. Attaching to Hooper for turn. Bringing the Dark Row back with its ability. At this point, Matt does have quite a bit of damage for Dark Row EX on the board. Not too much damage, but enough. It's 20 damage for each energy he has on the board, or is it each darkness energy? I think you missed it. Can't be each, dark, each darkness energy. Each dark, darkness energy on the board. Um, so. So that'd be 20, 40, 60, 80. 100 damage just from a 2 energy attack right now. Um, and obviously. He's effectively got two energy on the board this turn because he's used Dark Ray to bring one back from the discard pile and has attached one for turn for Hooper. Which is how that deck's supposed to work. Just, um, unfortunately he's managed to get stuck with Hooper in the active a bit too much, although it's not stuck so much because um, obviously Little Lapras can't do anything to it. Um, you can see in his hand he's got another Hooper to, just to replace the one that's already there. If it should get KO'd by any means. So, my play at this point is to try and get around the Hoover. Moving all of the energy from Lapras to Ninetales, using three energy switches, and then I'm going to Guzma in something and deciding what to pull in. Knowing that obviously the 160 damage that uh, Ninetales can do with its three energy attack isn't going to KO, but it's also because if I pull the uh, Dark Ray EX in, then it can actually do a little bit of damage to me, well, a little bit too much damage to me um, if I was to leave it inactive without killing it. Um, whereas the Dark Roy GX needs three energy, three energy to do anything, which you wouldn't be able to put on there if it's active. So even if I don't KO this Dark Roy, it can't do anything to me. Um, it's also just nice to sit there without it being anything to me and of course Ninetales can do 50 to the bench um, obviously not to the Hooper because even on the bench its ability works um, right now I am thinking about the possibility of Matt maybe finding his stadium which um, lets anything with dark energy on it have free retreat well two less um, cost retreat which basically in his deck is everything has got free retreat um so that can obviously bring in the dark cry ex and ruin all of my plans so i choose to do ice blade for 50 onto the dark cry on the bench <laughs> matt drawing into another dark cry there chooses to place the hooper down It's almost got too many options there. Chooses to go with attaching to the Hooper because he knows that's going to be difficult to get around some, somehow. If the uh, Nine Tails is knocked out, that is, that's it's going to be very difficult to get around the Hooper. I 
draw into a muscle band, which makes all the difference because it takes that 160 choice damage. Band. Yes, choice band. <laughs> Takes that 160 damage up to 190 damage, which is KOing everything on his board. Well, apart from the Hoopers, because they can't be affected. Which is, yeah, annoying. I do run the uh, water equivalent. <laughs> I do run the Ninetales that does the same thing in this deck, but uh, it, you, we see it come out, I think, at one point, maybe. I don't remember. But um, it doesn't actually get any play, because... Ninetales GX just gets around this Hooper by placing 50 damage onto the bench instead. Just seeing what I've used in my discard pile. So Matt currently has 140 damage on the board for that uh, Darkrai. Because it does 20 for each energy uh, and then 20, 20 plus. and then 20 on, on top of that, so it's 140. Me counting how much damage the Darkrai is going to do and whether I want to kill the uh, current Darkrai GX or... Um, Keep doing 50 damage to that dark eye and knock it out from the bench and hope that he can't pull it in and do a lot of damage to my night elves. And thinking, well, I haven't used my GX attack yet. If he does manage to do a lot of damage and it's not a KO, then I can just send all that damage straight back to him. So, I choose to KO the dark eye. Which I know is going to come straight back at me, but uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about the GX move. What were you thinking here, Matt? I don't know the moment passed. So it's now. It's, that's not even probably the right time. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what I was thinking. So you bought the Hooper forward, so because it can't be KO'd on the active, and like you just have to, you, it's, you're basically stalling turns, I guess, because um, I can keep doing damage to the Darker on the bench, but uh, not the Hooper. So you've got plenty of uh, chances to get set up on the bench again, take more energy onto the bench, so eventually you can come in with the Darker. Is the is the dream. So Matt putting his fifth and final Pokemon on the bench. Me playing as if I've got Parallel City on my side. <laughs> um, obviously Nine Tails is a huge threat being active because any damage you do to it that isn't a KO will just, as, soon as, as long as the GX attack hasn't been used, it just comes straight back at you. <laughs> so I um, attach another energy to Nine Tails, which I had in my hand. So making the taking the two away not so bad at all, uh, and doing fifty damage to the bench Darkrai, slowly whittling that thing away into nothingness. Draws a great ball, uses a great ball straight away. Just finds a vessel for a deck thin. There's got no room on the bench there, as you can see. This means you don't draw into it, so if he, if he has any more max elixirs to use and it doesn't draw into that, and so it increases the chances of drawing into an energy. And draw into a dung bell switch, I'm pretty sure I will never use in this matchup. Um, 
it's kind of useful on the Alolan Ninetales, but it's more useful as throwaway fodder, I feel, if I needed to. So if I was delinquented, I could throw that away when I don't need it. And doing another 50 to the Darkrai, leaving that Darkrai on 20 or is it 30? 20, 30 damage. So one more turn if you can't do anything to the nine tails is a KO on the dark cry, which will give me my last prize card. Um, pretty good matchup altogether. Um, lots was seen happening on the dark cry side, just no KO sadly. Um, so hopefully, guys, you enjoyed watching the match, and we will be back next week with a God of War matchup. Look forward to that one. It's it's a fun one. Um, and I shall see you guys next time. Bye-bye!